So last week, for some reason, I woke up and thought to myself, hey, wouldn't it be valuable for people if I found the most basic nav that I can find, come up with some super tiny improvements to it, and then use the same exact workflow that we use at my studio, Suits and Sandals, for building websites with budgets ranging from like, I don't know, like 10,000 to 80,000 plus dollars. All in Webflow, and we won't use any code, so it's kind of like beginner friendly. And so I found a nav. To do is super basic, but it looks nice, and I bet you it converts really, really well. So I went ahead and rebuilt this whole thing, and today I just want to walk you through what I did before I go into Webflow. Let me just show you this to do us nav and kind of why I chose it. The first thing is this uses probably one of the most common patterns in navs: logo on the left, nav items on the right. It also has one drop down with icons. If you notice when I hover over these primary items here, it kind of just flickers on. I think with some really tiny and super subtle micro interactions, we can really elevate the experience for this nav. I feel like while this is open, you should have an active state on the resources. So I also built that. And just with those small little tweaks, I think I got to something that was really nice. Let me walk you through the project. So let me pull up the Webflow project. I tried my best to not use any custom code at all, but I think I still got to a really good spot with it. And so this is kind of what I have right now. So it's super subtle, the animation and the changes that I did, but I think it just feels much nicer. Let me know what you think. These kind of little changes makes an otherwise boring experience a little bit more memorable. Let's take a look at the like mobile view. So when I click the mobile, it does that. There's a lot of kind of blending happening, a lot of cool stuff. So let me show you how I built this. I first started by cloning MAST. It's a really unopinionated framework, meaning it doesn't require you to follow a super, super strict set of rules. Client first or Lumos, I would say are fairly opinionated. MAST is really stripped down and, and very basic, and I love that. Where I always like to start is in the variables. I think the only changes I did was to adjust some of the button horizontal and vertical padding and also added a primary active color and my variable at that point was set up. The next thing that I always do is I'll go into the styles page and make sure that all my documentations are in fact correct. I always see a lot of websites out there that have style guides like this but then they don't use it. Nothing is like up to date like this. Look, UBG primary? No, this should be active. After I was done with the style guide, I'm a little bit crazy, but if you look in the resources here, there's individual icons. I treated this almost like branded icons. This is kind of a typical folder structure for me. I like this way of organizing things. Everything is in this utils or utilities folder that doesn't actually have to do with a front facing site. And in here, the first one is of course the styles. Then I have components where I actually built out the nav. Then the assets, this is where I place the icons. Now you'll see these icons and all, pretty much all these pages that end up in the utils follow the same look and feel just to make the project a lot better. Better. To make my life easier, I also created a static page template just called documentation template. And this is kind of how I spun up the icons page. So I don't have to like duplicate this massive styles page and spending seconds <laughs> deleting a bunch of sections. I just like to just have this set up so that it's always consistent. Taking a look at the icons, I broke out the branded icons into their own little section here. And then of course we have system icons. I really rely or try to rely on components as much as I can, just because it's so much more powerful. That's kind of what I did there. Once I finally got everything in place, everything's looking good and began building out the nav. I like to have my own dedicated spot for navs because navs can get very complicated. I like to have an actual spot where I can make changes and maintain my nav over time. You'll see all of the things that actually make up the final component. The way that I like to work is starting from the smallest element all the way up. How this actually came about, I started down here with the nav item itself with an interaction already kind of baked in. So after the nav item, I worked on the nav dropdown item. A few things I did here, I tried to use the same class 
as this one, just because they share a lot of common things about them, so I didn't want to repeat myself. I did add a combo class to the drop down item just to flex it. And once I converted it into a component, you'll see that there's actually a slot in here. So I'm using slots to be able to kind of generate these drop down items. And this became clutch because like if I, you know, let's copy and paste this. I want to drop in a different icon, let's say the downloads icon. You know, you could just do that and now and delete the old one and now you have downloads. And so once I have the props set up and all that for the nav dropdown item, I started working on the dropdown container itself that's looking like this. And with the dropdown container, you'll see everything is kind of broken out. Here's the props and all that. And then I essentially flatten it, just the container itself, and just call it nav dropdown list. So anytime I need to update my list of resource links, I can just go here in the nav dropdown, double click, and then boom, just drop in components, the nav dropdown item components. Like if I tried to do it here, it would be kind of annoying and hard. I'd have to, you know, reveal the dropdown container itself. So I'd have to like start messing around with styles and yeah. It's not good, it's not fun. After I converted it into a component, I also wrap it inside of this nav dropdown list wrapper. This is more for how the actual dropdown interaction has been built. If I double click into the nav, we'll, you can kind of see what's going on here. Just using general like mast layout type stuff here with a row and column. I have the brand like the logo inside of a div called nav header. And then the nav toggle, when we go into, you know, smaller with devices, that's where nav toggle is as well. It's in this nav header. And then on the right side, I have another column that's spanning across there. And for this one, nav primary items div, which wraps around the entire thing. This is essentially my call, except I didn't want to pack my call with a whole bunch of stuff. So I just created this div and then placed all of the layout type stuff inside of here. So at least this serves this singular purpose. And then inside of nav primary items, I have my list, the primary list, and then utils. They're just kind of flexed together. Inside of nav primary list, each of these items right here uh, got unlinked for some reason. So I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. They all share the same uh, hover interaction. Just super, super basic and simple. The drop down itself, I wanna talk about this. Took a little bit of a, wait, how should I do this? And so it's always kind of hard to make sure that things stay open and that they don't go into the hover out. And to do that, I had to create this nav dropdown wrapper and inside the wrapper where I have this actual toggle for it. And the container is, as you would imagine, positioned absolutely, just so it doesn't add width or height to the actual nav itself. We want it to almost escape the DOM. If I set this to block, you'll kind of see it drop down like that. And this is kind of exactly what I mean. Like this would be a nightmare to just like edit this way. Right, that's why I have a dedicated section down here for editing the dropdown. Once I revealed it, it just brings in the list wrapper that we made. And then I do have this kind of empty div here called nav dropdown background. And this just helped with mobile interactions to improve that. And yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the setup there. That's kind of how all of that works. That's my nav. It's pretty cool. Last thing is I can show you my interactions. We could start with the nav item. So here I just have a hover in. Background color and the text color is all I'm changing here. But to get that like effect of the background color is what's motivating that text color change vibe. If we go over here, the durations are pretty quick, right? It's 0.1 and this one is 0.2 and they're happening one after the other. So nothing too fancy here. I'm almost blending it by making the text color just be 0.1 seconds longer than the background color. I think with blends, you can either use the delay or you can use the actual just like playing around with different durations and also different easing. With that like basic thing in mind, the nav dropdown wrapper, I have a mouse click tap for tablet and down. And then on desktop, it's a mouse hover. There's not a lot going on in here. It's really just all about like 
really tweaking the easing properties and the durations to getting to something that I like. With the hide and show, anytime you use hide and show, opacity always kind of follows it. Managing all of that stuff is, is kind of tricky. The close or you know the out animations I also wanted to pay attention to I really wanted the experience to be you know anchored in some ways and you can see the order of events here it follows what these guys are doing except now there's kind of a second phase to it where the arrow brings in all of the drop down items so I think that's kind of you know flowing really nicely there that's it that's what I was working on um, if you're interested in following along, literally step by step, stay tuned. I'll release that soon, hopefully. Um, I hope you found this helpful. It's just kind of ranting, but catch you on the next one. See ya.